Can you hold it and then when I ask you, you can give it to me? Yeah? upon him and what was profound about his message what was profound about his message that his message has reached from the dusty villages of Medina to London to Tokyo to Hong Kong to all over the world and what it is about the message is the simplicity of his message the profoundness of his message the intuitive appeal of his message and that was that there is absolutely nothing which is worthy of your love of your worship of your sacrifice of your heart of your soul except the creator of the universe and in Arabic he came with a simple message which was rejected by everyone at the time but the message was something which they knew deep down inside was true and this is the same case with the people today who claim, like this gentleman does, that he doesn't believe in God, or like other people may claim. But the reality is this. Deep down inside, when we need help, deep down inside, when we discover we are going to die, deep down inside, when we discover the end of our life is near, we start to think about these questions. We start to think about God. We start to think about the hereafter. Well, I'm here to ask you a question. Shouldn't you reflect about that before it actually happens? Shouldn't you reflect about the end of your life while you are healthy? Shouldn't you think about what the purpose of life is before you get to that state? Because the reality is this. There is absolutely nothing in this life that will give you happiness except the love of the Creator. There is absolutely nothing in this life that will bring you peace to your heart except the love of the Creator. And no matter what philosophy people teach you. And today's world, my God, is full of philosophies. Philosophies of feminism, Marxism, atheism, communism, Christianity, Buddhism. Well, I'm here to give you a news. And the news is this. God in the Quran, he makes a promise. He makes a promise in the Quran. And the promise he makes is simple. The promise he makes is this. It is God who has sent his messenger with guidance in the religion of truth 
so that it may prevail over every single system. Whether that is atheism, communism, feminism, Lady Gaga, Shintoism, doesn't matter. Islam intellectually will conquer them all. Why? Because Islam is the truth. Why? Because Islam teaches you, teaches you what you are created for. You are not created to work nine to five. You are not created for these trivial things that we are involved in. You are created for the worship of the divine. And no matter what anyone says, the reality is this. Deep down inside, we know there's a creator. Deep down inside, we have a longing in our heart for that creator. And deep down inside, we know that we are going to be accountable after we die. Because the reality is this. Just like George Orwell, just like Karl Marx, just like Lenin, just like Aristotle, just like Napoleon, just like all these figures in history, they came with a message and then they died. They and their message and their followers, where are they today? We may have small remnants, but where are they today? The reality is this. The reality is because their message was not profound, it was time bound. Because their message did not appeal deep down to the human being, it did not flourish. Look at the history. Look at the history of, say, Marxism with the Soviet Union. This was the dark empire which was never supposed to end. This was the dark empire which was godless. This is the dark empire which used to persecute religion. And they used to teach there is no God. And they used to teach that Darwinism is true, that we evolved from lower life forms. And they used to teach secularism. Where are they today? Where is their empire today? Where is their tanks today? Where is their great orators today? Where are their statues today? You have seen them crumble. Why have they crumbled? Because their message deep down is not a message with, which resonates with human beings. Because a message that resonates with human beings, it can never die. A message which deep down resonates with human beings is a message which will never die and it will continue to flourish. And this book, this is not a book of terrorism. This is not a book of beheading. This is not a book of killing. This is a letter, a letter from the Lord of the worlds to you. And this letter, it contains in it information that will give you peace of heart, which will give peace to your soul, which will give you bliss in the hereafter. And it will make you understand that there is no good, there is no evil. Nothing happens to you in your life except it happens by the permission of the Creator. And for you to understand, as God says in the Quran, that He did not create creation except to worship Him alone. And the Creator is nothing like the creation. The Creator is one. The Creator is unseen. The Creator is eternal. Their creator is nothing like a human being or nothing like that, what we can imagine. Regardless of what atheists tell you, regardless of all those people who try and say, we believe in science, so we don't believe in God. Regardless of what they say, this is the truth. And how do you know it's the truth? Look at your own life. Look at the way that you live. Look at the last 24 hours of your life. Were the last 24 hours of your life purely for survival and reproduction? Was the last 24 hours of your life purely to make more children and survive? Of course not. You have higher goals. You have higher ambitions. You believe in civilization. You believe in morality. You believe in ethics. You believe in rule of law. You believe in all these, these things. But with atheism, with agnosticism, with these disbelieving systems, you cannot have any of those. So there is no such thing. And let me repeat this as a challenge to anyone that's here that is an atheist. There is no such thing as an atheist humanist. There is no such thing as an atheist humanist. Do you believe? Do you believe you can be good without God? How can you be good without God? How? So what's that based on?
Just the way you were brought up. What if you were brought up in Nazi Germany? Would you go around killing Jews? There is no God without. There is no good without God. No, I'm saying something different. There is no right. There is no wrong. Good and bad is an illusion of the genes. If there's no God. Before we get to that, I am making a claim, and I want you to let me know whether that claim is incorrect. There is no such thing as an atheist humanist. Because from an atheist perspective, all you can say about right and wrong is it's an illusion to help you survive. That's the best answer you guys have. You'd speak louder, sir. This is speaker's corner. Sure, sir. Let me take your criteria. Your criteria is it depends on what your mother and father taught you. Sure. Sure. Why, if you have a mother and a father that teaches you running over small children with lawn mowers is okay? What, what I'm trying to get to, sir, is this: if you say right and wrong is based on social conditioning, then if the social conditioning is different, then something bad will become good. Based on what? From an atheist perspective, based on what? I agree. What I'm saying is, as an atheist, how can you justify that? Sure, why if you were told something different? <coughs> okay, sir, let me ask you a question. You exist today in 2018. If you existed a hundred years ago, would your morals have been different? Right, five hundred years ago, were morals in Europe different? Sure. So morals five hundred years ago are different to today. Sir, I don't disagree with you with your ethic. I'm asking you to justify it. There's a difference. I can say, for example, I can say as an atheist, I believe in reason, right? But as an atheist, you cannot trust your reason. There's a difference. So I'm not saying, I'm not saying you, you as a person, I'm disagreeing with your ethic. What I'm saying to you is this, sir. I'm saying to you, how can you justify good or right or wrong or morality or civilization using atheism? You can't. So if your family, sir, give me something which is you believe objectively right. You should respect your neighbors. Okay. Do people in the world teach something different to that? Right. Okay. In your world, forget it. Let's look at, say, Sub-Saharan Africa. Is there possible that... Okay, sir, is it possible that somebody teaches you not to be good to your neighbor? Right. So, if you hold the belief as an atheist, being good to your neighbor is good, and somebody else believes being bad to your neighbor is good, how do you decide between the two worldviews? Sure. But what criteria is that based on? Right. Now, common sense is what the Nazis were using, using their own master race theory. They believed they were the master race. They believed they had to wipe out the subhuman races. They were applying social Darwinism. They were using their common sense. They were the most advanced civilization on earth at the time. They invented V2 rockets. They invented jet engines, nuclear technology. They were ahead of the rest, most of the world. So being intelligent, having, using common sense can lead you down a rabbit hole. That's not true. That's not true at all, sir. 
Oh, if, if you're a lion in the jungle, kill to have your dinner. <coughs> yes? But there are many people, humans, and human dance often do bad things to its neighbors. Sir, let me give you let me give you an example of the animal world. Do you know that sharks, before they're born, they kill their siblings in the womb? Right, tell me, is that murder? No, no, sir, I'm asking a question. When a shark, a baby shark, when, before it's born, when it kills its sibling, is it committing murder? Sorry? That's an irrelevant question. My question is, is it murder? That's the point, sir. That's the point. From an atheist perspective, you don't have an answer. No, sir, I am not saying I'm good and you're bad. I'm saying something different. I'm saying good and bad and right and wrong and civilization and morality and rule of law makes no sense under atheism. I'm saying something different. But you haven't justified it. You've made statements, but you haven't justified it. Sure, sir, that's social conditioning. That's social conditioning. Sir, even if religion was purely social conditioning, it doesn't mean atheism has an answer to right and wrong. There is. God is the answer to morality. From an atheist point of view, there is no right and wrong. Why do you think that, sir? I'm saying something different. Okay, do you believe in do you believe in right and wrong? That's got nothing to do with atheism. Do you I believe don't, in? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I believe in relative right and relative wrong. What is wrong for one uh, group, social group is right for another. That's true. Perfect. That's atheism for you. No, it's not atheism. Okay, let's it's, that's the only no, answer no, atheism no, leads to. No, atheism. If you do certain, some, certain things in some countries, it's taboo. Finish. You can't mention, for example, uh, you can't name your son after a living <laughs> person. They have to be dead. It's taboo. You, you break this bad. Here, who cares? Right, so sir, so, let, so, so when no, you, you're yeah, sure, sure, I'm, I'm asking something, right? So say you have a society which says naming our children a living person is bad. Another society said it's good. As an atheist, how would you decide between the two? Exactly. I agree with you totally. It's not your job to. I agree with you totally. And that's what that's... No, 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 no. Sir, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about God here. It's got God to do with it. It's like saying God is a leaf, or God, God controls my breakfast cereal. It's got nothing to do with it. It does, sir. It does. So let me let me let me explain how it does. God is the objective, is the one who gives us an objective criteria for right and wrong. And from an atheist, from an atheist perspective, sir, let me just say this point, and you can challenge me if you want. The concept that we are taught today of in society today, uh, which society? Western society, no, this no, world no, today. There isn't, there isn't a, there isn't a particular society. There are okay. societies. The way we are brought up here in London. I, I'm not brought up differently from you. I'll tell you that for a start. No problem. Right. So let me give you my view. Ah, your view. That's my view, yeah, right? And let's see if you guys want to challenge it. <laughs> we are taught, or I am taught, or I was taught, there is such a thing as evolutionary humanism. You can be you can you can be a human being who believes in right and wrong and good things and be an atheist. And what I'm saying is that's total garbage. I'll tell you why. Right and wrong is like color perception. That leaf is not green. Green is the color that bounces back at me. So a dog, exactly, a dog will see that maybe as grey or something else. So morality is Nothing but an illusion of the genes to no, help you no, survive. No, 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 no. Morality depends on the society in which you're brought up. It always did. I agree. I'm not saying anything different to that. So where are we disagreeing? But you're saying you're, you're saying yes, I am. Yeah. There is an absolute right. There is no absolute right. Why am I wrong? You're wrong in thinking that athe an atheist can be a humanist Why? and can be a good Why? person okay. Why? because Why? because can believe in good. Sorry, because from an atheistic perspective. Right and wrong, good and bad, rule of law, morality, 